The following program is sponsored by Friends of Life Outreach International. Coming up, Jonathan Kane, musician from the band Journey, shares his return to faith as well as his marriage to Pastor Paula White. I've never had that really kind of a rapport with a woman that was it was so deep. And we had so much in common. We both shared the tragedies and we've made millions, lost millions. We've done similar things in life and we knew what we wanted in life. Something greater next on Life Today. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Betty, and this is James. Well, we've got uh, Paula White Kane. I'm not even sure when I introduced her the other day that I put the cane on there, you but didn't. I messed up. You know that, and, uh, and Jonathan's so kind. But uh, here's the deal. This is an incredible story, and I got to watch it up close and personal in some ways, but from a distance in prayer for years. And I'm seeing the answer to prayer. And, and this Jonathan Kane, I didn't really know. You know, I heard the Eagles a few years ago and I called my son. I said, Brandy, you ever heard this group, the Eagles? This is when they were doing their <laughs> kind of come back together deal. He said, Dad, they're as great a musician as has ever been. Do you not know? I said, no, I didn't know. And then I found out about this group, Journey, and about their lead singer and about some of their songs. And Jonathan Kane, of course, he's written some of them. He's one of their <laughs> great musicians and a singer. And all of a sudden, I realize, here they are, and then I meet him, and he's with Paula. <laughs> then I find out they get married, yeah. and I'm looking at this, you know, rocker over here, this musician <laughs> guy, you know, and I, you know, here's the guy that didn't even know who the Eagles were, didn't know who Jerry <laughs> And let me, let me tell you something, Jonathan, watching what God's doing in Paula's life is magnificent. You're watching yes, it close and personal. Yes, sir. Watching what's happening in your life, and I'm just going to go ahead and say it to you. Of all the people she's been around, and she's been around a lot of well-known people, she's been around a lot of preachers. Mm. You've impacted her in the most profound and positive way mm. of anybody I've ever seen being close to her. Mm. And what I'm watching God do in your life is amazing, and mm. Journey's kind of back on another big role, and you've we got sure another are. great lead singer. We sure are, and God brought us uh, Arnell. And uh, he, is, uh, he is a blessing <laughs> and has a heart for God, uh, loves his family, uh, represents us so well, you know, and he prays with us backstage and, um, you know, it's just a, a breath of fresh air for us all. We watch him get out there and he has so much energy and he, funny thing, he wears the same size shoes as Steve Perry. <laughs> <laughs> but he's got that big voice too, right? Seven, size seven, and he always told me those are big shoes to fill, and I said, Arnell, you bring your own shoes. <laughs> <laughs> but, but he does. He, there was a pair of sneakers that showed up that were Steve Perry's old sneakers, and they fit. <laughs> <laughs> True story. That's good. God All right, tell me humor, about amen. this journey right here. What do you think about what you're watching? Because... Um, you know, she was honest. I don't have any I have a moment thought that she covered her journey. Right. You saw it, fell in love, but then you didn't know she was going to be journeying back and forth to the nation's capital. <laughs> well, I prophesied something, sir. Oh, um, really? Yes. When I met her, I, you know, she was asking me questions about finding balance in her life, and I was trying to help her find the balance between. I told her it was like making a great chord and a lousy chord. And I said, it's, it's all the three things that have to go together, you know? So you have to find the elements in your life and balance them. And she believed me. But I said, and by the way, <clears throat> there's going to be a second coming of Paula White Kane wow. that the world has not seen yet. And it's gonna be greater and more profound than anything you've ever accomplished. I told her, and it's coming and the world is not gonna be ready. You're, you're gonna make a, you're gonna be a, a world changer Hmm. And I told her that. This I is a rocker talking all this stuff. It made me cry. <laughs> <laughs> he did. God showed me. I said, there's too much in you to, to be held back. And your voice is such a voice. And I watched her preach all over That's the world, true. you know, with a transparency and, and, and an energy and a love for God and the, and the gospel um, and the word. It's it, it just, it has to come back. So for me to watch this now, it's just like, yep, 
Yeah. I was right. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's like when Journey came back in 1998 and they all said we couldn't do it. Mm, they were wrong. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the thing is uh, that I'm watching this where she's winning the respect of people who were taught to not even like her, much less respect her. That's right. And I'm going to tell you why I believe it's there. Because the love of God that literally pulled broken pieces together Amen. to make the most beautiful stained glass window you've ever seen That's for the right. glory of God, Amen. which you see Jesus in. They, they were watching something so real, and they see unconditional love. They watch a, a woman that is trying to help people, not because they're wealthy or they're successful or well-known or powerful. She just loves them. And mm -hmm. she loves everybody around them, and she loves everybody that comes in from wherever stripe you're in. She's not dividing people into their little tribes. Right. She's really, really trying to get God's arms around all of them, knowing that God put his arms around her. Amen. And put his arms around both of you and brought together this incredible couple. <laughs> and I think from the time you walked in this studio, Jonathan, you got around us. Did you feel like Betty and I loved you Absolutely. and received you right uh, off the bat? Absolutely. I, we're, we're like family, sir. And <laughs> I, I think, you know, kingdom-minded people uh, are very... You know, they're loving to each other, and we respect and we understand um, that we have to be together as a family. And we are our one big family. We are one church. Yep. Amen. We are, there's only one church, oh, and we yeah. just need to learn that. Right. Now, a perfect father would like to have a family she that would reflect She's a Catholic, it. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> That's his background. All right, how did y'all meet? Uh, Southwest Airlines. It's crazy. <laughs> oh, we, neither one of us should it's have been. Easy, it's easy, it's easy. Oh, yeah. So I tell all the single ladies that uh, fly Southwest. No, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> I, I the was, enemy can't get you at 30,000 feet. <laughs> <laughs> what was crazy is I, I, I talk about flow in there and how God had to teach me not to force what doesn't fit. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, we, in this like real dramatic lesson on this horse taught me how to flow and just trust him and let go. And so I don't try to make something fit when it doesn't. And anyway, I was going to get on a, a plane to come to Texas. And it was it was Southwest. It was sold out. I'm like, well, somebody gives up their seat every day on Southwest. You know, and I told my uh, secretary, I said, just keep calling, keep calling. And I never do that, James. I mean, she's like, oh, book me later. And I was so determined to get on that noon flight. This was like three weeks. So finally the day of, uh, she calls me up. She goes, I made a call this morning and one seat opened up. <laughs> <laughs> and I walk in, and you know, I'm in the C. You know, I'm like, C. I'm an A on Southwest. You know, <laughs> and it's like, so I get on, and I sit across from him. And I drop a book. He thinks I did it on purpose, but I didn't. <laughs> and he looked at me in my eyes, and he goes, "What do you do?" And the Lord gave me three words for him. I mean, just like that gave me a word of knowledge for him to tell him that God loved him. And, and I usually say, I'm a public speaker, because I know this is going to be a, a three-hour conversation. <laughs> so if I say, here I am, a woman, I'm a pastor, right? <laughs> and I said, I'm a pastor. And he went, really? And I started talking to him. And at the end of uh, us just opening up our entire lives to each other on that three-hour flight, I said to him, I said, God wants you. He wanted, he grew up wanting to be a priest. I'll let him tell a story, but mm -hmm. he was in the most tragic fire in history. 93 children died, changed all code, then understand, um, got saved in a Baptist church when he was 19 years old. Mm -hmm. And always, he says, I always had to walk with God. His father was a strong praying man, very mm -hmm. strong prophetic man, and, and always said, was his vision keeper. But, uh, and John said, I shared the room with God, like the suite, but I never opened the bedroom to him. Mm. You know, mm. I didn't let him say all the you. way in. Or say thank you. I mean, for me, there was um, discouragement, uh, sort of an unworthiness came over me, and I was going through my midlife crisis. I was in a bad marriage, um, and I kind of lost hope, and I lost touch. And I, some of you probably have gotten offline with God. Where are you, God? <laughs> Where did, how did I lose you? You know, and I, my question for Paula was, is it possible to establish that relationship with Christ again that I had when I was young? You know, I, I, I want that glow back. I want my glow, you know, and she encouraged me. Yeah, it is possible. <laughs> and she said, there's a Holy Spirit on you. And I believe that um, you will reunite with once again, and boy, did we ever. And it was funny, <laughs> God, God, I told her I wasn't going to get married. I was never going to go to Africa. Well, this is a funny part. Wait, this is a guy who kept telling me, he, would, he asked me, he said, 
um, would you like to come meet me? First, he asked me to come into a journey show. Mm -hmm. So I brought my daughter with me. And I'm kind of like, hi, hi. <laughs> and then he's like, well, I'd, I'd like to, you know, would you like to come meet me and stuff? So I, I didn't date. I mean, I, what am I going to do? I, I don't know how to date. So <laughs> I kept telling him, I said, well, I, there's this man. He's a strong mentor and spiritual uh, father-like figure in my life. He lives in Africa. And I talk a lot about him. And, and he said, I'm never getting married. I'm never getting married. I'm never Again. going. Uh, yeah. And I'm never going to Africa. And I'm like. And I just prayed. And so he goes to London to meet him, has a head-on collision with the Holy Spirit, totally gets saved. And he looks at me and goes, will you take me to Africa? <laughs> and, uh, we got married in Africa. <laughs> so, but this Three is, times okay. we got married. I mean, so we did. One for God, one for the Father, one for God, the Son, one for God, the Holy Spirit. We still did. <laughs> we did. But what was so amazing, he went to Africa I mean, surrounded by prayer, like five days. We're on prayer mountain. We're praying 12, 14 hours a day. I mean, he, he's in the jungle, literally village night. People praying over him, praying. And, uh, they play he, serious over there. He said, <laughs> they he goes, joke around. He said, Take it right to the enemy. <laughs> it's warfare. And he goes to Archbishop. He said, uh, I'd like to get baptized. And James and Betty, I've never seen something this supernatural. He gets baptized. First off, it's like five-hour baptism. You know, they're taking him all through the word, everything, repentance, everything <laughs> else. He is down under that water. He comes up, and I literally see on him like I'm looking at a different person. And But I knew. I knew. And I, I'll say this is a woman. I knew because he, he gets down and he, on his knee in the car, and he asked me to marry him. But... He says, I watch him, we get back and he changed, uh, this will say something to women, he changed his phone number, he blew up all his social emails, I mean all his social media, he uh, changed his email, he changed every. I never said a word to him, I thought, oh he's serious, he just cut off everything to his past, I'm in. <laughs> I go, I'll take him. Well, it didn't take me long to figure out you can't date a pastor too long. You know what I mean? <laughs> You had, you had to make things right before God, and I've never had a woman uh, speak to the king in me like Paula uh, to really hear my heart. as the first time, I, and, and I thought, I remember that, that riot on Southwest, and I said, I, I've never had that really kind of a, of a rapport with a woman that was, it was so deep, and we had so much in common. We both shared the tragedies, and we've made millions, lost millions. We've done similar things in life, and we knew what we wanted in life. Mm -hmm. And I was writing my memoir, Don't Stop Believing, and at the time, I was on the plane writing it, you know. On Which my, is a great book to on get. On my laptop, <laughs> and, and so I was sharing the stories, you know, of, of my faith with her, and, and, and it was so encouraging to hear her, and I said, I, I needed to hear this today, you know. Right. So uh, it was great to, to finally, you know, let go of all the fear, and you know, you just say, yeah, this is this is the love of your life, you know. And and I just, I guess I was fearless in love at this point, you know, and just said, take me, God, I surrender, you know. And, and I love this know. love. Oh. <laughs> you know, I say this and I write about it. Um, I wanted to create yeah, that family. The book family. is great, and so much of this mm -hmm. is here in, in absolute detail. And I've been married before. But I never had a husband. Mm -hmm. I have a husband, mm -hmm. and I really never, do. I mm -hmm. never will forget James and Betty. The first time he prayed for me, came up and he just put his hands on my shoulder, real light, and there was no Theo, thou, and fifty <laughs> scriptures. It was just he said, Jesus. Oh my, he's normal. And, you know, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is that a real, a, a real Christian. guy, a real man? Yeah. And he just wrapped his arms around me and he prayed the simplest prayer that melted me to my core. Praise and God. I felt God's presence probably more powerful than I, one of the most powerful, profound times I felt. And he, we take communion together every day. He cooks for me. <laughs> he prays for me. We'll be standing there. He'll know how tired I am or this or that, or I'm taking care of business or doing something. And he just put his arms around me and he'll start praying. And he's like, God, give her the strength. And he just... Then he buys me nice shoes. No. <laughs> I, mean, I, just, I bought her a pair yesterday. I, mean, he just, I want you to sing the song that by oh, this title. Okay. You wrote it. Yes, sir. And uh, well, you know, I was I wanted to make it modern. I wanted to make it uh, to the point, have a message 
have a little bit of a bounce to it like Paula. <laughs> have a pair of high heels on. Uh, and so something greater. Here it you is. You want to hear him? <laughs> Lived through heartache, felt the pain Till I found you at the cross Where you took away my shame Just couldn't see at the time You got in me at every turn Oh, I would stumble, I would fall You planted lessons I would learn Use me, love, for something greater. Write my story, mighty author, my creator. Nothing else could ever set me free. Grateful for the life you've given me. Always faithful, always leads me to something greater. Felt revelation in your word, felt power in your name. I put you higher, put you first. I knew my world forever changed. You healed my wounds with perfect love. Wash my sin in waves of grace. Set apart, I am restored. For me, your presence is enough. Use me, Lord, for something greater. Write my story, mighty author, my creator. Nothing else could ever set me free. Grateful for the life you've given me. Always faithful, always leads me to something greater. Rescue me in darkness Heal me where I'm torn I will follow you into battle Face the darkest storm And I will overcome Use me, Lord, for something great story, mighty author, my creator, nothing else could ever set me free, so grateful for the life you gave to me, always faithful, always leads me to something greater, move me love. Something greater. I will follow, I will follow you. Something greater. And it's it absolutely. There's something greater that you wrote about, is something greater I'm watching in the two of you. Mm -hmm. So grateful for both of you. And Jonathan, you've been sitting and watching leaders impacted by the truth mm -hmm. that you just sang about and Amen. by God. Mm -hmm. And that's the only hope for the nation. That is the only hope. God's truth and his way, Amen. his love. Amen. Thank all of you for being, let's say, a prayer partner and supporter. Mm. This book is in the bookstores. Get it. We are right now, and boy, you talk about somebody that wants everybody that's been hurt helped. Paula does. Okay. Jonathan does. We are helping rescue those most horrible scenes in the world. Sexually trafficked young people, boys and girls, primarily girls, horrible. And those that exploit them, held captive by the deceiver, pray for their freedom. Amen. But let's set these who are trafficked free. Together we can do it. We can rescue them. We've got some friends who so deeply care. They said, we will match what you do up to $320,000. That was a lot coming from a few people saying, we care that deeply about setting them free. 
I want you to watch very closely and you can see what evil does. Mm -hmm. But then you can experience and express what only love can do. Watch closely. We're standing here today on the edge of two countries, India and Nepal. And what you see behind me is a flow of vehicles, people. There's a lot of business going on out here. What we don't see so clearly, though, is the evilness, the darkness, because some of these people are actually being trafficked against their will. For years and years and years, thousands and thousands of Nepali children, Nepali girls, and even older women have been trafficked into India, and from India, they're taken into third countries like, you know, Middle Eastern countries. So this is such a need for us to do, be able to do something to prevent this. So our program allows us to install teams of people right at the border between Nepal and India. Is that what these girls and the, the men in the yellow shirts are yes, doing? Yes, that, okay. that's our staff. Okay. We have about 55 people okay. located in three different stations that cover uh, the three trading, major trading posts between Nepal and India. We've been able to rescue over 1,900 women, girls, and boys over the course of, you know, three, four years from three different stations. So it's been a huge, huge success just to be able to uh, curtail the trafficking problem in Nepal. All day long, Seven just days watching for girls. Yes. Seven days a Seven week. Seven days a week. And any of you who are parents out there, the feeling that you would have to have one of your own little girls just tricked by traffickers. And let's just say for the next 20 years of her little life, she is going to be a slave to men, and they're never to be heard of again. That would break my heart to have my own daughter caught in a situation where she can't get out and just to be used and abused day after day, night after night. I think that would break your heart too. I know it breaks mine. We need to do something about that. And we will together. I, I can't look at Ralph and these precious daughters that just beautiful girls and knowing that our mission director and overseer said goodbye to his wife not too long ago. And there he is. And these beautiful girls, his daughters are precious. There's a dad that is uh, just trying to put God's arms around the most overlooked, abused, hurt people perhaps on the planet. Would you please join Ralph who goes right there and look at all these incredible mission workers that your love and your support make possible to support the outreaches. Not only there on the border of India and Nepal, but all over the world. And in the sex capital of the world, most unbelievable home for trafficked children that have been totally changed, all by love. We have an amazing, Betty, this is this just stuns me. Some of our donors said, we so believe in this. It's so important to us. Would you join with these people? Think about what they did. They stepped up and said, we'll give $320,000 as a matching gift, Betty, oh to God. everyone who'll make a gift, we'll match it. And it takes an average of $128 to reach, rescue, and begin the restoration process. I always challenge our viewers, and you know I do this. I, wa I want to elevate your thinking. If you can give the 128, please do. It'll be double. You'll reach two. But I always say to our, our viewers, could you possibly rescue 10? Could you give $1,280? Would you please? Betty and I will, and we know it'll be matched because of the love and people just like you. All right, what you do will be double. We have some beautiful gifts to send you to say thank you. We'd like to bless you. But you're giving the greatest blessing. You're giving freedom and life. Please, right now, go get your bank card. Would you do that? Or write a check, make it to life. Make it to life. That's what you're giving. Or get that card and go online or dial the phone number there that people are calling in for prayer, and that is paid for by your love. But would you call right now and say, put this on my card, knowing it'll be doubled. If you could help rescue 10 or even more, do it. Rescue one, it'll be two. 
please, right now, you respond as God's leading you to, and you immediately become someone's miracle. Thank you for doing it. Behind the bright lights, there is a darkness where a world of innocence is lost and abuse runs rampant, scarring the souls of children with no one and nowhere to turn for help. With bodies broken and hopes crushed, these young victims are trapped in a never-ending nightmare. Today, you can shine the light of God's love in this dark world to reach, rescue, and restore these young ones to the life God designed for them to live. With a generous $320,000 matching gift, now your gift of $128 to help rescue a child can be doubled to help two children. Your $64 gift will be matched to help rescue one child from the horrors of human trafficking. And a $32 mission rescue gift will be doubled to $64. And with your donation of any amount, we'll send you the Faith, Hope, Love tea towel set. These beautifully woven hand towels are a wonderful reminder to remain steadfast in faith, hope, and love each day. With your gift of $128 or more, you'll receive the life-giving Proverbs Journal. Bound in genuine leather, this journal is filled with wisdom and daily encouragement from Proverbs, featuring lined pages for your personal notes as you reflect on godly instruction to success in life. Finally, please consider a gift of $1,280, which will now help rescue 20 children. And you may request our beautiful bronze sculpture, Safe in the Shepherd's Arms. Please call, write, or make your gift online. Well, I'm believing with all my heart that every person who can help did so gladly and joyfully. Thank you so much. Betty and I say thanks on behalf of all those you help. And we want to say thanks to the one who does something greater in impossible situations miraculously. We've heard that in this beautiful couple, what God's doing in their lives. And I want you to join Betty and me saying thanks to Jonathan Kane <laughs> and <laughs> Paula White Kane. The book is in the bookstores. You help us rescue these who are trafficked. You say, James, would you send me Paula's book? We will to say thank you. Thank you. Let me be honest, sitting in a fence is very uncomfortable. What does it mean as a Christian to be all in tomorrow? Life Today is made possible by the supporters of Life Outreach International. Your gift will be used exclusively for the exempt purposes of life. The ministry features specific outreaches as examples of the programs it supports and conducts. Gifts are considered to be without restriction as to use unless explicitly stipulated by the donor. The ministry is a member of the ECFA.